will love ever happen for me? That's what I'm speaking on, kind of like with the kind of with an underlining of my clock is ticking. They do go hand in hand, um, and we have to acknowledge that that is a tricky question because there's so much dimensions to both of those that question and that statement. You know, I, I, you wonder. You have to ask yourself, what are you hearing when you hear that statement, my clock is ticking, or will love ever happen to me? And both those things speak positioning and posture. Um, now, why it can be tricky is because that's a language that spoke in a believer's community and in a non-believer's community. And we were once non-believers until we conformed to believing. So that means we had to take ourselves into from one mind state and conform to another. So to a non-believer, I would say that they would experience the fruits of love, but not necessarily the full effect and the fullness of love. Because to know God and to be in a relationship with him opens up a whole nother dimension, a whole level of opportunity for love to really manifest in your life. You know, that, that 1 Corinthians 13 love that we hear so much about. We hear at weddings, but yet there's so many divorces. Those who felt like, okay, love's happened, but then they don't understand the undergirding of what keeps that marriage happening. Um, so we have to really acknowledge that because God is love and all that entails in the definition of it, if you reject that fact, then you box your love and in turn boxing God and all the inheritance that comes with it. We serve a God also that he has contingencies attached to his movement. He loves to bless us and he loves to speak to us, but there's some things that we have to, to put in play in the movement for those blessings and, and those conversations to take place. You know, you got to believe, you got to have faith, there's obedience, there's conduct and action. Causes and actions that help bring things into place. So although that those who are finding themselves men or women, because it's definitely not discriminatory, um, like Pastor Kendall said, you, you know, men enter in a position where they're ready to sow that seed, sow that seed, sow that seed. And then, then you have some women that are out there and that's just basically settling. Yeah. They're settling, you know. And, and sometimes they can manipulate themselves by thinking, well, you want to sow seed and I'm ready for love, so let's settle. That ain't love. That ain't God. Okay. So because when you enter in a covenant with God, submission takes a deep level and a, and a deeper level and a deeper presence. So as you walk your relationship out with God, your desires begin to change. Your desires begin to change. Your plans, your ideas, your image, your idea of what you even feel is in a mate. Okay? You know, what you might desire to be chocolate like your daddy butterscotch like your first love, God will change the game on you and flip the script. Yeah. Yeah. So we can't submit ourselves to the world and its standards and stipulations and time zone. Correct? Yeah. So when the clock becomes your Lord, it can dang near destroy your life, your self-esteem, and have you having reoccurring dead-end relationships in your life? Yeah, yeah. Understand. Things become habitual. Things become habitual when you continue to subject yourself to things of the world. You find yourself in the same place you were before in your last one. And then you have to ask yourself, 
what didn't change? What didn't change? Because right now, the only thing that's happening is the same poison that's going on and on. So you ha what I say to myself, because this thing cuts two ways. I am, you know, you're hearing repetitiously, I am definitely not an expert, but I can relate to this walk. <laughs> I can relate. Um, I had to get to a point where I killed my clock and I just submitted to service. Submit it to God. Because one thing about it that I can rely on is when a man's ways pleases the Lord, everything will line up. So I began to kill things. Oh, everybody around me is getting married. So what? I'm, I'm serving God. <laughs> Everybody's having kids. All right, so what? I'm serving God. Because one thing I knew is that as long as I was serving God, I was in position. As long as I was serving God, I had a posture. And this word, this question, will love ever happen to me, didn't drive me. I, and then another thing that happened is as I was walking out servitude, then I realized that my character became what God created it to be. It changed. I was developing the way that I was created to develop. See, when you kill off the world stipulations and, and the, the guidelines, then you no longer look like the world, but you look like your creator. Amen? Amen. So it no longer drove me. God became the driving force in my life. The, and then my whole life became driven by love. Wow. Why am I waiting for something to happen that already happened? Right. But remember, there's dimensions to this thing. There's dimensions. I understand. I understand, Jesus. <laughs> So in one aspect, aspect, love did happen for me, um, but it became the driving force. And you kind of have to ask yourself, what is driving you? Because whatever drive you, drives you is what's going to move you. So if, you're, if what's driving you is, okay, I'm getting 30-some-odd years old, I'm getting 40-some-odd years old, man or female, and I, have, and, and I have yet to get married, then you're going to find yourself in a marriage that's not of God because God don't rush nothing. He's a processing God. So if you start moving to your own beat, then sooner or later that melody is going to change. It's going to change. You have to ask yourself a question because, again, when... When will love hap will ever happen to me? It's a question that it doesn't focus on what's going on out there. It's a question that focuses on what's going on in here. It's an introvert examination. And when the inside begins to change, the outside begins to change. The only one that can change the inside is God. And when God changes the inside, he changes the outside. He's not a backwards God. He's not. You're not going to you're not going to put the trash in the trash can and then line the bag. <laughs> it don't work that way. All right? You rocking with me? All right. So what's making the question even a question in your life? You have to ask yourself that. Ask yourself that. Now, let's turn to the testimonial aspect of my life. You know, because sometimes people can come and hear words like this, and they're like, oh, but you make it sound so easy. You just dove into your work and, oh, this and this and that. And, you know, but what about? Well, what about? It does get lonely. <laughs> it gets lonely. Especially when you've come from a world that it's immediate fix. You know? Just, just like a person that's coming off an addiction. Some of them have steps. Some of them just got to go cold turkey. How do you come down from off what's never yours to, to, hold, to hold an idolship in your life? How do you, find, how do you prevent yourself from getting caught up? Well, with my, t with my life, strange beds became a turnoff. Because the more and more I got 
closer to Christ and learned who was making me and creating me, the more I felt like a cheater to the opposite. I got tired of doing tricks and flips and then turning over and feeling like empty. So my driving force changed. It changed. Jill Scott has this song that, and, she, and she, she's just a real dope artist in, in an aspect. But, when you, but one thing about God is when, you know, he transforms you, then he just takes you to a whole other dimension. So it's kind of like what Ms. Pastor Kendall was talking about when it came to the what love got to do with it. Well, Jill Scott has this song where she just describes this insatiable encounter that she had with a male. But at the end, the last thing she said is, but why do I feel so empty? I'm here to tell you that I don't care what sensation, what action, what a man or a female can promise you. If it's not in God, you're empty. Whatever feeling you put towards anything, that's not of God, is meaningless. It's a waste of time. Ain't no counseling about that. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. And for the believers in that being, a, you think of your biggest addiction. <laughs> it don't matter what it is. In the end, were you, was you quenched? Wow. Did it fix it? So, yeah, you know, and then we have to understand, you know, the women... The woman by the well and the Mary Magdalene's, those things are real. But let's flip the script because all those, those were, although they were women, it's still a spirit. Men can feel the same way. You have men right now that's running around here sleeping with wives and sleeping with women to crave a need, to crave a want. It's a spirit. So, don't, so let's make sure that we flip that two-sided coin and remember, it just wasn't Mary. It could have been Marvin. It just wasn't a woman by the well. What if it was a man? We got to keep that open, especially when we're ministering to non-believers and they're like, well, this woman, mm -mm, mm -mm. there's no discrimination in God. When he died, he didn't just die for women and their struggles. He died for men too. Amen. So the closer you get to Christ, you, your desires change. One thing that I began to realize is that I didn't desire, and like Pastor Kendall and Pastor Sean says, you know, I, didn't desire, I began to not desire for the legs and the, and the roses. Roses die. Um, I didn't desire for, <laughs> they do. <laughs> I didn't desire for the rings. Rings get lost. Um, I didn't desire for the, I desired for a covering. Wow. Because the more and more I get closer to Christ and the more and more those dark places become darker, I just want to roll over into my husband, my husband, not their husband, but my husband and be like, pray for me. Because that's real. That's real. When you've just changed the whole search, it's not about what car you can drive me to. It's how deep can you drive in prayer to pull me out of what I just came out of when I was doing my father's business. That's what I'm looking for. So will love ever happen for you? What's love? What's love? My, it, it just changes. Your drive changes. And that's what kept me and keeping me because it's not over. <laughs> it's not over. <laughs> you, know, you know, holidays don't really drive me as much as they did because I can, it's not, it's, you come in here and you go out there and you see people and they're in bondage and you have your own bondages and your own strongholds that are coming down. I, see, I speak very strategic because I, I don't want to stay in anything that I know I'm coming out of. So you have to forgive me. I'm not putting myself above you. I'm just putting myself at a point where I know I'm not finished. Okay. Um, and, 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 and you see the people of God and you're like, okay, Lord, whatever you need me. When you get to a point where you're like, okay, God, point A. Okay, God, point B, point B. Then you begin to bring things in perspective. Perspective. I need a man to feed me with the word. Keep your sandwich. My God. I, I, need, I need someone to, to shower me with prayer. Keep the affirmations. I need man, a man to help clothe me in the spirit. Keep your Gucci. 
and your Dolce and Gabbana. I, I, I need that, 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 that circle of a ring that's unbreaking. You don't have to worry about buying me that. Just display that and demonstrate that and I'll be okay. Because when love happens for me, I want to be able to recognize it by its fruit. You understand me? <laughs> oh my God. You know, change. Can we say change? Okay. I'm just saying. I'm still walking, <laughs> but I understand. I understand. It does get lonely, but loneliness don't drive me. Loneliness don't keep me. I don't dwell there. I don't stay there. If it takes for me to, to change my playlist, then I'm going to do that because I won't keep in bondage in something that's going to take me out of a godly-like character. So I daily have to submit myself. We have to daily submit ourselves. Amen. All right. So let's lock um, let's lock onto that word happen. I looked it up a little bit here. Happen, happen, take place, occur, ensue as an effect or result of an action or an event. To come to pass. Occur or be the case by chance. And this is my favorite one. Come into being or become a reality. One thing about God is he lets us know that there is two different worlds. There is a dimension. But he's constantly existing in the spirit realm. And it's our posture and it's our thought process and it's our conduct that what pushes things into reality. See, that contingency, that faith, that's a necessity. That believing, that's a necessity. That conduct, that walk, that's a necessity. So help yourself answer that question. What's your posture like? What's your positioning like? Will it happen? So Pastor Kendall and I were, were kind of walking and talking a little bit, and he came to me in brother form. See, I understand this. You, you know, God and in Christ form. You know, so I understand the, 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 the different hats. But I appreciate it because he was kind of asking me, you know, how was I going to attack this thing? And I said, you know, there's the aspect that I lived, that, I mean, that I lived per se, but I want every, I have this desire that I want everything to be driven by Christ. So I didn't want to come up here and just tell you what I think, how I feel, my perception and subject it on you. I needed some guidance. And he, and he was saying, well, you know, jump in roof, check some things out. That and I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> I was like, again. <laughs> I was like, but, but that special, that's so cliche. Every time you talk about, you know, what happened, and they want to pull out old Ruthie. <laughs> you know, and I'm just tired of it. But he was like, but he had to say, you know, he had to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Check out old Ruthie. No. <laughs> he said, wait a minute. He was like, it's amazing when, how the word is because the word is life. It breathes. It changes. You know, as you change, it cha it's, no, I'm sorry. It's never changing, but it's ever evolving to you. Yeah. It's revelation. Yeah. It's revelation. He said, so explore and get revelation. And I said, hi, right, Jesus. I'm going to do it. I submit. <laughs> I obey submission, oh pastor brother. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and we continued shopping. No, um, <laughs> so um, and I had always um perceived Ruth as this. And can I? Now I'm gonna be all the way real with you. I'm gonna be all because you know I'm I, I'm kind I'm somewhat street, but I'm gonna keep it all the way plain. So I always seen Ruth as this chick. <laughs> in the fields and this savior on a horse came and said come with me I'm going to take you from out of here and I'm going to say because you're a woman of good stewardship and all that and I'm like but that but, but hear me that's what I heard so what position and, and posture was I at at that time introvert think looking inward examination what was I hearing at that time. And so um, I went ahead and I got into old Ruth. 
<laughs> and um, I came across um, chapter 2, verse 3. And you don't have to turn it. If you're writing notes, then just take, put in your notes back. It said, so Ruth left and entered the field to gather behind har the harvesters. She happened to be in the portion of land belonging to Boaz, who was from the Imlech. Did I say that right? Because, you know, it's kind of Jewish and Hebrew. <laughs> I am African American. Is that right? <laughs> um, family. <laughs> you know, no offense to my brothers out there. Um, and then <laughs> and I was looking at the camera. Um, <laughs> sorry. We're all brothers in Christ, one body. Um, <laughs> and then the, the King James verse, and it says, "Half equal," you know, "half in." Um, and I, and I, I understood how important it is to to do read the King James version and the translations because it kind of gives you a different perspective, different revelation. Um, but still, one God. And said, and he had. And he, she had, was his light on the part of the field belonging unto Boaz, for those who need the King James Version. But how many understand that there are no coincidences in the kingdom? There are only divine appointments. Yeah. Only divine appointments. So this happened. This happened. It was a setup. Because God has a plan. He always has a plan. We ask the question again, will love ever happen to me? So let me kind of young and arrest this bold and beautiful this thing, okay? I'm going to give you a movie trailer because I don't really want to stick hardcore on the story, although now I can say it is a pretty, it's a pretty dope story. But now, because <laughs> I can receive. <laughs> but um, here you have a family, a husband, a wife, and two sons. The wife was Naomi supporting character, My, Naomi, <laughs> and um, they were at a point, they were in a land, uh, they were in Bethlehem, a promised land, and they had to, they left, they left, this was actually at a point in time where people were kind of doing what they wanted, wanted to do, and they left the promised land, and they went to Moab, hopefully I said that right, Moab, and in this, and in this nation, you know, basically they served pagan gods, <laughs> you know, um, they served pagan gods, and everybody was pretty much doing what they wanted to do. Um, the, they had two sons. One of the, both of the sons married Moabite women, um, Ruth and Orpah, I believe. Okay. Um, and based on their nation, based on the Bethlehem and the laws, you know, it was a, it was against. It was against the law to marry women of other nations, especially when they served other gods. So, basically, Ruth became. For those who are who watch Harlem Nights, Ruth became Sunshine. <laughs> Everybody know who Sunshine is? I can't say exactly how Red Fox would put it, but let me just say Sunshine was so dope she had the ability to make a man change gods. <laughs> That's mobile women. You got that? I see it all in your eyes. They're glossed over. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, you know, so and, so, and they specialized with having Israelites switch over and change gods. Now, let's fast forward. Let's fade to black, fade it back in. Ten years later, the son died, the brothers died, okay? And, the, and this is where I see how when the positions shift, how it goes ten years later. The positioning shift because now we're at a point where we have Naomi and we have the two daughters, the daughter-in-laws. Um, and Naomi's like, look, God done smited me. He don't like me. I was disobedient. Y'all might want to go ahead back to where y'all came from because if you rock with me, it ain't going to be any good because I'm going back to where I came from. And now they're not too fond of y'all. They're not going to like you. You're an outcast. Now, now I'm an outcast, but you're going to be a double portion outcast. And I don't think <laughs> that I can handle that. I got to go in there by myself. I can't take y'all until y'all got to the right going back to mom and dad. And, you know, and they were trying to cleave. They were trying but of course, like, forget this. You, right. I don't think I want to rock with you. That's a little too much. I, I can go home and get me a husband. I can get me some children. I can, I can be home with people that like me, that accept me for one. But there was something about Ruth, and this is where she became somewhat of a superhero to me, because I could relate to her walk. She wasn't worried about going back home and. Getting that husband and that chances for children and, and all that. She wasn't worried about that. All she wanted to do was serve. 
And I said, my God, Ruthie, we got something in common. It took a while to get here, but we got something in common. Because whether he comes or not, I can honestly say, I just want to serve right now. I just want to serve. <laughs> I mean, real talk. I mean, it took a minute to get here, y'all. For real talk, real talk. I was like, oh, man, he done got her roses again. Lord Jesus, there's another marriage. My God, children. And then there's another birthday. Mine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I've seen all that. You know what I'm saying? But when you get to a position where all you want to do is serve, then there's nothing that can keep you out of the will of God. God will change your destination. He will change the history on your line from where you've been and where you're going because we all got reputations. But when you line up, when you submit your reputation to a changing and transforma- transform- transforming God, yeah, there's a good chance that love will happen for you. Because when you serve a God that is love, changes the game. Changes the game. So Ruth became a superhero to me somewhat. Because here's this woman that says, Ruth, um, that says Naomi, I don't care that you can't bear children. And if you bear children, I might be 155,000 years old. I don't care that my husband died. I don't care. All I know is that I came into this covenant and he went on. But the covenant don't stop. So can I continue with you? Because just because things die, just because things end, doesn't mean that my purpose of serving is done. Can I serve? Can I serve? And Ruth got to a point, I mean, I mean, Naomi got to a point where she was just like, yeah, come on. You asked for it. Come on. You big and bad. Let's rock. There was even to a point where she would just stop talking because she was like, I'm not getting through her. When you get to a point where you're so engulfed in serving, can't nobody get through to you but God. Not someone saying, why ain't you married yet? Ruth turned a deaf ear. Are you going to ever have children? Ruth turned a deaf ear. Uh, You ain't worried about your family? Ruth turned a deaf ear. And she said, you know what? I just want to serve you. So I'll change God. And I'll change my direction. And I'll change my plans. And I'll change my plans. And I'll submit myself to Yahweh. Because if Yahweh kills you, then he got to kill me because this servitude life that I'm rocking I don't know anything else but it seems like I was basically created to serve that's all I know serve you it it seems that Ruth turned back to her origin of creation (sighs) diligent servant yeah Ruth's Ruth's my hero Ruth's my hero now And then here you have Boaz, because we can't forget about the men. Here we have Boaz, a man of noble character and wealth and, you know, even his position, because he's in a position, he's in this position called a family redeemer, which means that he has the ability that whether something's living or dead, he has the ability to redeem it, to bring restitution, to change up some things. If he feels like he can take the place and be like, this is a worthy investment, I'm going to go ahead and rock with this. Yeah, he's a redeemer. But it's funny because when Ruth was just so happening to be minding her business and gleaning, which is what they called it, from day to night, focusing head down, head down, because it's a head down job. It's a head down posture. It's just I just need to get all I can so that I can take care of what God wanted me to take care of. Man, she never could. She didn't even lift her head up until she was called. Until someone addressed her, she was that engulfed in her work that when a man came in, she didn't see him. When she seen these kids, she didn't see him. When it was time to eat, she didn't even eat. Because when the sun came up, she received, she got into her posture and served. When the sun came down, she was in her posture to serve. And it made the man stop and say, who is this? <laughs> Who is this? Because one thing about a godly man is he recognized godly fruit. 
And although she was a Moab woman, oh my gosh, she gave up an aroma of God-like tendencies. So God was transforming her as she was gleaming and gleaming in what it was. The nation, her reputation became a godly-like reputation and a godly-like posture. And it turned the head of a godly man. God wasn't, Ruth wasn't, wasn't looking for no husband. She was looking to put her hands to anything that she could put her hands to that, rip, that, that even reflected servitude. And Boaz, out of nowhere, well, out of somewhere, because, see, Boaz was that type of man of integrity that he spoke. Even though there was people that were below him, he still spoke and said, how are you doing? And the Lord be with you, and the Lord bless you. And he, 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 he didn't, because he knew that no servant was above the master. No master was above the servant. However that goes, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know? So let's fast forward a little bit. Let's fast forward a little bit. Um... You know, we say, well, you know, Minister Kendra and all this serving, you didn't think, don't you think that she, you know, had desires of a husband? You know, she was married for 10 years. Well, I'm here to tell you, I kind of walked that thing because I was in a relationship for about three and a half years. And you know what? It took me, because I was wanting to die, it took me some years to come up off of that. It's called submission. When your, eye, when your scales begin to fall off, you submit the new vision. You submit the new image. So you have to put yourself in a position where scales can fall off and you say, okay, God, here's my eyes. Okay, scales fall off. Okay, God, here's my eyes. So although I'm sure these things crept into her mind, it didn't drive her. Yeah. It didn't drive her. It didn't drive her. You know, she, she, there was probably some deprogramming, desensitizing that had to happen. Because when you lay with a man or a woman for years, you tend to turn, you tend to still sleep on that same side. Or you tend to still might turn that side down. Or you might still tend to go to bed at that same time. But she submitted her whole posture and conduct unto the Lord. There was a time where... I came, I returned home, and I had, for several years, I slept with the futon side up because I was so used to turning into someone, just turning into someone. But then when I turned to Christ, that side came down. And I turned into him this way. And I turned into him that way. And I turned into him because the thing about it is I realized that love, the love was all over me. It was all over. It was all around me. So the covers I threw back and I took him on and it changed the whole game. And that's what she had to do. Sometimes she had to turn this way and be like, oh, but I got to get up. Okay, I had to turn this way. Oh, no, but I got to get up. Get up. Keep going. Submit. Submit daily. Turn your mind over daily. Turn your heart over daily. Turn your spirit over daily. And I promise you, that flesh will come down. It'll come down and it'll be underneath your feet. And next thing you know, you a spirit walking. Because the flesh can't hold you no more. And you will be about your father's business. And when it happens, it'll happen. Because God has a divine appointment, a divine position, a divine destination to meet you, to have you meet your mate and your mate meet you. But until then, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I'll, I'll get my wifey resume together in Christ because Christ knows how to make a wife. So I'm not going to sit up here and take classes and do this and do that, you know, to, to, to create something that I've never been. I leave that up to God to make me something, to become that. Until then, I'll serve. So she put herself in a position where she killed pride. She killed what people thought. 
Hallelujah. And then, of course, when it was time to come together, they had a conversation. They had, Ruth went to Boaz. And, you know, and I, I kind of like to do the cliffhanger because we at the way Columbus like to encourage people to go and study. So I don't necessarily want to give you the whole story. Tune in next time at the Holy Bible Channel. <laughs> Same at HCSB. Same KJV. <laughs> but they did have a conversation and, and, and he was, you know, she went to him and she made her petition through obedience and through instruction of Naomi. This wasn't something that she went and did on her own. <laughs> she, she got instruction from Naomi. And remember, Naomi was from the original nation of Bethlehem. So who do you think was instructing her? Because although she might have felt like God smite her, it's, it's, it's really hard to convert. A, 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 taste and see. When you taste God, it's hard to get the taste out your mouth. So, so through living, she learned something. Something changed. Some things fell off. So she knew that when, when she spoke to go, and she followed instruction. And in their custom, you know, you, you go and you lay at the feet and et cetera and et cetera. Now, here's for those who, who find themselves giving the milk. Giving the milk. One thing that was so dope about Boaz was the fact that he had her in a position. She was in his bed. No one knew. She went in secret. He had, he, he, you know, he, he had her in a position where a lot of men and, and females try to get us in the bed. Right. But when a man sees something worth investing, he will honor that. Wow. In light and in the dark. Amen. So although he was still, he could have played on the opportunity he said, because you, have, you are such a woman of character and of fruits, I don't even want to tarnish you in the dark. So we've communicated. I hear you. You, you want a relationship. You want marriage. You want to make this thing. Because you've seen some things in me, and I've seen some things in you. I think, how about this? I'm going to give you some things. You can take back. That'll kind of distract the people that would think one thing, think, think ill of you, and, and uh, assume best of you. He even kept her then. Kept her then. Before the dotted line was even, before the, in, the, in the book, the sandal was switched, he kept her all the way up until the point to where she was his. Because you're his, God will keep you. You belong to him. And as he praises you and loves you in the background, he'll praise you in the forefront. But even if he doesn't, he still loves. He still loves you. You know, I see a husband and a wife and... Husband and wives don't usually go into the depths of what goes on behind the scenes and in their bedroom. It's none of your business. It's sacred. It's a covenant. It's to be honored. And God will honor you. My last notes. Uh, let me draw back for one second. Again, um, Pastor Kendall, as you know, some of you know, he is my brother. I remember the time period in which him and India were getting ready to get together, uh, married, married. And, um, you know, we have, you all have witnessed our relationship. We have this open relationship. So it got to a point where I had an apartment, and he was like, Kendra, the clock's ticking. I didn't give up my apartment. She's living in the one we're getting ready to go into. I have no place to go help me. I need to live with you for about one week. Because we've come so far, I don't want to dishonor 
her even when I know she's going to be mine can I stay with you and I said sure because you respect those who are trying to do it right you don't hate you, 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 you don't you don't be like well you got into it you don't you don't throw them back to the wolves because we are a body and you have to understand and recognize people's struggle, struggles and hungers. And those things happen. But when you see someone submitting, you respect that. And you uphold your brethren. And you uphold your sister. You don't say, are oh, you still a virgin, girl? And you still got him? No. God kept you. So therefore, I am my sister's keeper oh you said you lay down your sacred place i'll keep you because you are my brother we people out there that's got it jaded need us there's some people in here that still might got it jaded we need each other so will love ever happen to me and i'm closing i say it's contingent upon the three p's Posture, positioning, and perception. You submit all three of those things. And I believe, this is me, I believe we'll find the additional aspect of love. And it will happen. Peace will happen. But if he or she never comes, because Pastor Sean said something one day, he said, what if God does send you the husband and wife and then they die? That's real talk. God sent, oh, I don't know if God, well, I'm not going to say God sent Ruth. I don't know, I mean, the, the Moab brothers or whatever they were. But what I'm going to say is, is that <laughs> the Moab brothers, you know, <laughs> you know, but what I will say is God will he will perform he will finish he will finish his good work whatever whatever finish is look unto god because he'll give you the best def definition and if you're in god you'll be at peace with that i'm done <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs>